Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, today me and me and my pal Bats here are gonna kick off an office hours episode, uh, where we're, I'm going to answer five of your most burning, uh, pertinent questions about life, love, high finance, uh, extreme fitness, and uh, of course. SQL Server performance. So uh, that's that's what we're doing today. Um, if you like this channel and you want to support it with money, uh, you can sign up for a membership. There is a link in the video description. Uh, if you like this channel, but not in a way that is monetarily beneficial to me, you are free to, for this is absolutely free, like, comment, subscribe, uh, and of course, ask me questions for these Office Hours episodes that uh, I enjoy so very thoroughly. Uh, if you need help with SQL Server, perhaps in, in a way that goes beyond what a, a YouTube Q&A can, can, can do you for, uh, I am available as a consultant to consult, to, to do these things live and, and act, live and in, well, I mean, sort of in person. Uh, on your SQL servers, uh, the usual stuff, health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning, uh, responding to performance emergencies, and of course, training your developers so that you have fewer emergencies. Uh, no, one, no one likes heartburn, I guess. Uh, if you would like some performance tuning training from me, I have 24 hours of it available for 75% um, off. That brings the price down to about 150 USD, uh, and that is a very good deal. I am also uh, dropping a new course on T-SQL that is not part of that. It is a brand new thing. It is called Learn SQL with Eric. That's me. Um, it is in the works. It is out for tech review. I am recording things and I'm going to be releasing it uh, over the next uh, summer period months. And uh, it should all be complete by the time we get to pass. There's going to be the uh, beginner and advanced material in that. Uh, if you're going to pass, if you're going to attend uh, the, the pre-cons that I'm doing at pass, uh, you will get free access to the material. Uh, but right now, the, the pre-sale course is the pre-sale price for the course is two hundred and fifty dollars. Once all the material is fully booked out and live, it will, the price will go up to about uh, five hundred to exactly five hundred dollars. The price is going to double when the when the material is complete because by then, I'm, I'm probably going to want to make more money off this thing. <laughs> uh, upcoming events, lots of fun. Uh, well, uh, by the time this goes live, SQL Saturday in New York City will have come and gone. Uh, I should probably delete that, huh? Uh, pass going on tour this summer. New York City, August 18th to 20th. Dallas, September 15th to 17th. And Amsterdam, October 1st to 3rd. And then, of course, all of that, all of those events presage the, uh, the big one, uh, Pass Data Community Summit, uh, taking place in Seattle from November 17th to 21st. So with that out of the way, let's, uh, let's answer some uh, questions over here. Let me just uh, tidy this up a little bit. Let me bring that over a little so everything fits on the screen once Zoom it decides the appropriate level of default Zoom itness. Uh, oh, so it's a non SQL Server question first. I've heard you talk about your career path a few times and it's pretty weird. Yes, it is. Uh, I forget when the last time I talked about it was probably on that, that Simple Talk Redgate podcast. Uh, do you have any regrets? Are you still happy with what you do? Jeez, bear my soul, huh? Uh, so yes, there are, of course, there are regrets, you know. Um, uh, I, I think mo most of them, though, are, 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 you know, limited to me. Uh, uh, you know, like I, uh, I do a lot of consulting. And, uh, you know, like being on the phone a lot, is it wears you down, right? So you know, I would, I, and like, I, you know, I always wish that I had more time to put into uh, producing new training material uh, for money. But it always seems like as soon as I, I'm like, wow, this week's going to be nice and open for me to do all this stuff. There's just like, like I start working on it. I'm like, yeah, like I'm outline, blah, 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 and then it's like avalanche of new new people need to have problems. <laughs> like, well, you know. Uh, not getting any younger and you can't say no to money so that happens uh you know I'm, I'm, I'm still mostly happy with what i do of course there are ups and downs some days are more frustrating than others uh but you know it's you know it it, it has been weird and like you know like you know a lot of the weirdness with my career path was like prior to sql um you know and there but there's been plenty of weirdness with my career path like since then too uh you know like 
before I started working for Brent Ozer Unlimited back in 2015, I was a, like a relative nobody, right? I, you know, I had presented a few times and I had like, you know, done some stuff, but uh, like I was like, I had a blog that I maintained lightly, but um, you know, I like, I, I didn't know uh, how weird uh, parts of the SQL community were before I started working there. Like I was not at the cool kids table at all. I, I, I had no idea that there was like so much like just crappy high school clicky like stuff. So like when I started working there, um, you know, like, like you find out about like all like the, the stuff that goes on like beneath, <laughs> beneath, the, beneath the covers a little bit. And it, you know, like there are people like, especially in the MVP community who have just been pure nasty to me because I work there, right? Because like I have some like friendships and relationships with with, uh, with like Brent and people who work there. There are people who have just been awful to me throughout my career. And like, and like they can all go fix cars for all I care. But, uh, you know, it, it's one of the, like, like, it, like the weirdness didn't stop when like, you know, I, I stopped bouncing and got into databases. Like it's just been weird all throughout, right? It's just like, you know, like, it's a strange stuff, right? But yeah, you know, um, no, like no, like giant regrets. Of course, you know, um, you know, I, I, there are there are things that I wish I had done differently and a bit more smartly um, when I when I first started the my own consultancy up. And there's stuff that I still wish I was like doing a little bit better at. Like, you know, I'm not I'm not good at like SEO and marketing and all the other stuff. Like, I'm you know, I can produce content, but like when it comes down to it, you know, um, I'm not I am not a marketing master. So. You know, there's stuff that I wish I was better at, but you know, my, my regrets are all my own. They're not, they're not anyone else's. So um, anyway, uh, let's go on to the next question here, which is, do you have differing approaches for performance tuning an OLAP system versus an OLTP system? Well, yeah, of course, you know, it's uh, uh, OLAP is all about throughput and sorry, uh, OLTP is all about throughput and OLAP is all about latency, right? Uh, you know, o OLTP, you need to be able to pound, 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 and get a whole bunch of stuff in and out very quickly. OLAP, you need to have like big things happen faster, right? So, you know, it, it, it certainly changes, you know, the things that you look at uh, as far as, you know, like which queries you go after, you know, like in an, in an OLAP system, it might make total sense to go after things that take the like longest or use the most CPU to run. In OLTP, you do have to sort of balance that with like, you know, what, what runs the most? Is there anything we can do about this? Uh, things like that. But, you know, um, there are, of course, differences, you know, like even like indexing strategies, OLAP, I'm going to push column store, OLTP, I'm going to push like narrow row store indexes, stuff like that. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are, of course, like differences in those things. But uh, like, a, like a lot of the environments I see are, 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 are kind of mixed, right? Like there's, you know, there's OLTP plus reporting, right? Like plus the OLAP stuff. So, you know, you do have to sort of balance out both. Um, you know, uh, OLAP is sort of like, I don't know, OLAP is interesting in a way because you have, qu you have queries where like the expectation is that, the, yes, they're going to take longer, but like you also have to balance resource usage a lot differently, right? Because like, you know, you might only have like four or five queries running at the same time, but like that's where you really start running into like resource semaphore stuff. Um, you know, OLTP is typically where you start running into like thread pool stuff. Then when you mix them, you get both. It's a real joy. But yeah, there, there are different approaches to it. But, um, you know, like I said, a lot of the stuff that I see is kind of mixed. So you do have to attack both sides of that coin when, when working on things. So let's see here. The next question we have. Uh, oh, boy. It's a lot of, it's a lot of writing. Uh, do you know of any disadvantages of using a filtered index to filter null values? We have a very heavy transactional table, like 10K transactions a second with a clustered index and one non-clustered index. We don't have any queries that select rows with null values from this table. The DBA team said we should avoid using a filtered index without any proof. What do you think? Well, uh, how, what proof did they want you to present to them? That is the question. What proof? What, 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 what are they looking for? Um, how does one gather proof without being able to uh, do an experiment in which uh, evidence is gathered and some hypothesis is tested. So I don't know what proof they want, but um, you know, the big thing with uh, filtered indexes is there are, they are really only terribly sensible if the filter is going to exclude uh, 
uh, a large number of rooms. Um, usually you want to, you know, like if, if, it's, if you're only going to exclude like 25 or 30% of the rows, it's, you're not going to see a dramatic difference in query performance. Once you start getting to like the 50, 60, 75% range, that's when you start to see bigger differences with things. Um, so, you know, first, you know, find out what proof they want. Second, figure out what your queries are doing. Figure out how many like null rows your filtered index would actually exclude and kind of go from there. Um, you know, uh, take some of your, you know, assuming you have some sort of development environment, you know, create the filtered index that you care about and start testing queries against it. Um, you know, there's, there's not really a downside. The only thing that you must remember is with your filtered indexes, whatever column, I, I, you said you want to exclude null values. I assume there is a column or maybe multiple columns with null values that you are looking to exclude. Make sure that those columns are in, uh, in, the, in the filtered index definition somewhere, not just in the filter, but like as included columns too. So SQL Server doesn't have to do as much guesswork. It has those columns available to it so we can evaluate whatever you want, look up free. Uh, there are a lot of uh, peculiarities with the optimizer around uh, filtered indexes, specifically with nulls that, uh, that do sort of force you to need to uh, have those columns in the index definition beyond just the filter. All right, let's see what we got here. In your demos, hey, someone's paying attention. Good for you. You compress page. Uh, your indexes, do you default to that with all your client workloads? Do you see more benefit than negative impact in your experience? Uh, yes, I do default to that. Uh, if you take a look at my new store procedure, SP index cleanup, uh, part of the results in there, uh, well, I'll, like, like, like for the part of the store procedure where like merge index, like index merge statements are like generated for you to like bring two indexes together so you can replace like multiple indexes with a single index. Uh, like any index create statement there gets created with page compression by default. There's also a whole section of the results that scripts out adding page compression to your existing indexes. I use that. I use the hell out of page compression. Most people who I work with have far more data than memory and page compressing indexes, you know, aside from column store compression, but you can't put column store on a lot of tables for a lot of reasons, uh, which is actually, now that I'm looking ahead a little bit, I see that's sort of in the next question. But um, yeah, like, like, like page compression makes your data smaller on disk and in the buffer pool. And uh, you can make ma way better use of the hardware that you have. So if there is any IO boundness to your workload, right? Like you see a lot of page IO latch underscore SH and EX weights, uh, you know, queries are just constantly going to disk. You know, it could be when you look at wait stats as a whole or when you hit SP who is active and you see all these queries bogged up waiting on reading pages from disk. Page compression can take some of the edge off that by having smaller objects to A, read, right? Like, like having less data to bring from disk into memory is, is a faster process. And then having that data be compressed in the buffer pool means that every object up there takes up less space in the buffer pool. So you have more space for more things. Right? It's sort of like those vacuum bags where the people pack their like, you know, winter clothes in when, when, they're, when, when, it's, when summer rolls around and they suck them down and like, you have these like, giant puffer jackets and blankets and stuff and you just bring them down to this tiny little com nice compressed thing. And it just makes, it gives you a lot more storage space. So it's the same basic idea there. Okay, so the final question. What do we have here? I've seen you suggest column store for paging and dynamic searches. How do you make your non-clustered column store indexes perform acceptably on tables where all of the data is hot? Mm. So uh, if, you, if you pay very careful attention, one thing that I say is that uh, column store indexes should gener generally be reserved for large tables. Uh, usually, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of the pamphlet material from Microsoft says at least a million rows. I'm not sure that that's where I start. I, I think, you know, uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty million are, are more sensible numbers there. So we're going to run a question by you, and that is: Do you really have five, ten, fifteen, twenty million row tables where all of the data is hot? You have, you have a table with that many rows where people are just constantly updating all 5, 10, 15, 20 million rows. Do you really, honestly, truly have a table like that? That would be a very strange thing. 
very, very strange thing indeed. Uh, I think perhaps you're misinterpreting uh, where, where I suggest using these column store indexes. Um, if, you, if you truly have a table like that, um, then um, I, that, that would be an interesting consulting engagement, but uh, <laughs> good Lord. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, you, you are right that, uh, you know, uh, updating column store indexes does, does, uh, does not quite always go as well as uh, updating row store indexes, but um, boy, I think, I think, I think there is some, 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 some attention that needs to get paid to the types of tables that make good candidates for column store indexes here. All right. I'm out of breath. I'm winded. My allergies are terrible. My lungs are at, not at full capacity. So I'm going to uh, go breathe for a little bit and uh, I don't, then, I, then I don't know what. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something and I will see you in uh, whatever video we do next. All right. Cool. Thank you. Goodbye.